Hello, this is Mr. Buffington, and in this lesson we will be estimating irrational numbers, irrational square roots specifically, like these examples up here. So let's go ahead and get started. Something you will need to know before you get started are these numbers. The square root of 1 is equal to 1. It's actually plus or minus 1, but for the purposes of this lesson, we're going to be talking about just the positive square roots. So the square root of 4, we'll consider that 2. Square root of 9 is 3, and so on. These numbers should be familiar to you. They are referred to as perfect squares. These numbers that will multiply perfectly together to give you a perfect square. So 6 times 6 is 36. The square root of 36 is equal to 6. That's how they work. So you'll need to be familiar with those. We'll see them throughout the lesson. The other thing that you need to know is what irrational square roots look like. That's what we'll be working with. So square roots of non-perfect squares, or basically square roots of any number that was not on that previous list. The square root of 2, the square root of 5. There's lots of them. The square root of 7, the square root of 115, 99, 3, 24, 6. All of these numbers are examples of irrational numbers. In other words, square roots of numbers that are not perfect squares. There's a list of them. So what we're going to do today is to actually estimate the value of these irrational numbers without using a calculator. Here are the steps. We're going to think about a number line, and we're going to put in our minds, and I'll show you how to, kind of an example of doing that, we're going to think of a number line with all of the perfect squares on it. Then, we're going to ask ourselves, what numbers go between there? Okay, so our number, we'll ask which numbers does it go between. Don't worry, this will make sense when we actually do it. And we're going to be answering this question an awful lot today. Where does it fit? So let's get started. Here's an example. Estimate the value of the square root of 5. So where does it fit? Look at our list of perfect squares there. The square root of 1, square root of 4, square root of 9. And the square root of 5 fits between the square root of 4 and the square root of 9. Does that make sense? 5 is between 4 and 9. Square root of 5 is between the square root of 4 and the square root of 9. That's where it fits. So it's between the numbers 2 and 3 because the square root of 4 is 2 and the square root of 9 is 3. So on a number line, where does it fit? It fits right there. So we would say that the square root of 5 is between 2 and 3, but it's closer to the number 2. And you can see that on this number line that I've created, the square root of 4, or in other words 2, is over far at the left side, and the square root of 9, so the number 3, is at the far, um, far right side. So you can clearly see that the square root of 5 fits in between them, but it's farther to the left, in other words it's closer to the number 2. Let's do another example. Square root of 23, where does that one fit? It fits between the numbers 4 and 5 because the square root of 23 goes between the square root of 16 and the square root of 25. So we'll make a number line. I'm not going to put all the numbers in there, but I want you to try and imagine where does the square root of 23 land. When we're looking at this number line, we should say it's probably right about there. Although I didn't write it in, it fits inside of this number line between the numbers 4 and 5, and it's a little bit closer to the number 5. That's how we estimate the value of square roots, irrational square roots, without using a calculator. Let's look at another example, a bigger one. What is the value of the square root of 111? Where does it fit? Look at my square root values over here, and it fits between the square root of 100, 10, and the square root of 121, which is 11. So our number fits between 10 and 11. Here's my number line. 100 is on the left, 121 is on the right. Again, I'm saying it that way. I know it's the square root of 100 and the square root of 121, but I'm just looking at the numbers. Where does 111 fit in there? 
or the square root of 111. Where does it fit? Right about the middle, doesn't it? So this one, we would say it's between 10 and 11, and it's close to the middle. So that's how we estimate. It's not exact, it's estimating. And if you want to take your calculator out and do the square root of 111, I bet it'll be close to 10.5. It'll be right about the middle. I'm not going to check. I'm just betting that that's what it is. So you can check on your own and see where that fits. So just as a bit of a recap here, when you're estimating irrational square roots, I want you to think about a number line of perfect squares. What numbers does it go between? And where does it fit in between those numbers? Hope that lesson was helpful for you. Have a wonderful day.